Jonathan, so many people don't realize that what they're feeding their pet isn't really great for their pet. So what is human grade pet food? So human grade pet food is very simply food that is made to human safety standards that is formulated for pets. How do you go about designing the product? So we use a lot of veterinary nutritionists, food scientists, and just put a lot of R&D into, uh, into developing the recipes. And then we, we partner with human food facilities to make that food alongside other food that you typically find in a grocery store. So this would be a typical food manufacturer and they're customizing product to your standards? Yes, we're one of the very few, if not the only company that's solely made alongside human food. Well, I don't think people realize what the farmer's dog solution versus what's out there today, just the huge discrepancy in health outcomes for pets. Is there a way to quantify that already? Not yet, uh, if we're thinking about long term, if you're talking about years of life or anything like that. But yeah, you're, you're totally right. Most people think that our food is meant to be extra tasty or to somehow spoil the dog, but it's really just about feeding something that is appropriate for a living animal. And how do you determine the nutrient formulation? That I leave to the scientists. Uh, but there, you know, there is an incredible amount of research that's done in the pet food industry. So if you actually look at how the pet food industry started, um, it's using food waste or things that would otherwise be totally inedible. And uh, that takes a lot of science to figure out how can you give this to a living being and help them sustain life. It started out inedible and they make it edible. Oh yeah, you can, I mean, the pet food industry can use diseased meats and all sorts of, again, ingredients that would be illegal to sell to a human to eat, um, but the, the way that they process it and then the vitamins and minerals that they add can help a dog sustain. And so all we've done is take that same research, uh, but we try to avoid, and we do avoid all of that extra processing. Well, one of the challenges is of course that existing pet foods are have a long shelf life. Mm -hmm. Kibbles have a long shelf life. Yeah. And, and so with far, the farmer's dog, you've got a real sort of call it farm to table uh, challenge in terms of shelf life. How do you get customers over that and solve that problem? That was one of our biggest challenges. First was finding human food facilities willing to make the food for us. Um, but then the second was how do we get it to customers? How do we make it convenient? How do we compete against the convenience of kibble or canned food? And so that's where a lot of our technology comes in, in developing these subscriptions, in developing the predictability around the supply chain. So we know at any point how much food we need, where we need to send it, uh, and we send it just in time. So we can have the food made fresh and shipped directly to, to customers and making it very efficient and convenient. In the same way you can use the existing food manufacturing uh, ecosystem, mm -hmm. Is the, the distribution system for existing human food also accessible to you? Yes and no. So we were fortunate that we started at a time where delivering groceries or delivering uh, fresh food was just starting to happen. Our challenge was that dogs are so different. So if you look at a human food meal, you need one size and that's it. When you look at dogs, you have a two pound dog. Oh, right. You have a 150 pound dog. You have a customer that has one of each of those. And so how could we create a personalized experience where the food can be convenient, you're getting the right thing for all these different variety of consumers? That was a challenge that we had to innovate on. And so once someone actually subscribes, can you describe the reaction from the pet going from the kibble they're, they're being fed to human grade food? I mean, it's, it's drastic. They put a lot of science into making kibble tasty and putting all these additives into it. Quite different from humans where the healthiest thing for you isn't always the tastiest. We have all sorts of dogs that won't eat their kibble, and for the first time in their life, they put their head down into the bowl, don't lift it up until they're done eating. They're super excited. So you really see that immediately. We get all sorts of feedback about physical differences that people see in their dogs, whether it's more energy or maybe a little more relaxed dog, they see benefits in their skin and coat. Some dogs that had a lot of issues before, they start to go away. I mean. It's, I mean, I certainly noticed that with my dog. Yeah. She eats human grade food and her anxiety level's gone down dramatically. Which is an unexpected benefit. Um, and we, we see that, we see that a lot. But the most shocking thing is when people are having like physical illnesses uh, with their dog, the, the notes we get from customers about the changes they're seeing, that's what continues to motivate us.